Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Vitalik Kirchen, top gun rights lawyer in Washington State. Today I'm going to discuss Washington State Patrol's new firearm background check system called SAFE. I will discuss how it came to be, what it does, and how background checks will be handled moving forward. Stay tuned. The SAFE system has been operational since last July, but today, February 1st, is the mandatory use date. SAFE stands for Secure Automated Firearms E-Check. Prior to today, use of SAFE was optional, although most dealers have already transitioned. As of today, all dealers must use SAFE to transfer firearms. Please note that concealed pistol licenses will continue to be the responsibility of local police and sheriffs. State Patrol will only process checks that pertain to the fire transfer or purchase of a firearm. Also note that any items that require special treatment under the National Firearms Act will continue to be processed by the ATF. The origin of the new SAFE system started back in 2020 with the passage of House Bill 2467, which commissioned the creation of a new single point of contact system. Prior to SAFE's usage, Washington State operated under what's known as a partial point of contact system. What this means is that some checks went through local police and sheriffs, while some checks went through the FBI. Specifically, handgun checks, and later semi-automatic rifle checks, were done by local police and sheriffs, while all other firearm checks were done by the FBI NICS. Because of inconsistency in speed, use of resources, and results, the legislature passed HB 2467 enacting a single point of contact system and assigned the responsibility for that system to the Washington State Patrol. State Patrol began onboarding dealers in July 2023 and the system has been rolling out steadily since then. State Patrol has also implemented numerous changes and improvements to the system as it listens to feedback from dealers and gun owners. I'm going to break up this discussion into three stages. Initiating the check, during the check, and after the check. Now with respect to initiating the check, from the purchaser's perspective, the process will not change a whole lot as the paperwork process remains largely the same in terms of ATF Form 4473, state forms, identification requirements, etc. However, there is now an $18 background check fee that applies to every firearm transaction. This replaces the $25 fee for semi-automatic rifles. This fee requirement is actually not new and went into effect as of January 1st. From the dealer's perspective, the guessing game of where to send the paperwork is now over. The dealer will electronically transmit the paperwork to the State Patrol. The dealer will also no longer be responsible for sending denial notices to the Association of Police Chiefs and Sheriffs or for sending notices of pistol and semi-automatic rifle purchases to the Department of Licensing. State Patrol will do all of that automatically for the dealer. Once State Patrol has done so, it will destroy the purchase application as required under federal law. The dealer will still be required to keep a record of the application for six years. Other than the initial headache of transitioning to a new system and learning how to use it, the SAFE system should generally lighten the dealer's administrative burden. Next is what happens during the, the check. The SAFE system works much like the NICS system in that it's automated but only to a point. The SAFE system can instantly provide a proceed, it can instantly provide a deny, or it can return a stance status of indeterminable which will require more research. To understand how and why these results are issued, we must understand what the SAFE system is looking at once the check is initiated. The SAFE system is primarily based on name and date of birth as no fingerprints are submitted when a check is initiated. It compares the name and date of birth to several databases to determine if there is a match. 
If there is a match, it will either flag the check as indeterminate or will issue a denial depending on the matched criteria. If there is no match in any database, the safe system will return a proceed. The databases that safe checks are numerous. They include the Interstate Identification Index, or III, which is the National Criminal History Database based on fingerprints that is maintained by the FBI, the National Crime Information Center, or NCIC, which is the national database for protection orders and warrants, again maintained by the FBI, the Washington State equivalents of those systems, which is the WASIS and WASIC, the NICS indices, which is a federal database solely for the inclusion of firearm prohibited persons that aren't otherwise included in any other database, the Washington Healthcare Authorities database of individuals who had been involuntarily committed for mental health treatment or deemed incompetent to stand trial, the Administrative Office of the Court System, which is a repository of Washington State court records as it pertains to criminal charges and protection orders, and the Law Enforcement Information Exchange, or LINCS, which is a nationwide intelligence sharing system for law enforcement. If there is a match in any of these databases, the system will return an indeterminate result, indicating that further research will be needed. A human being will then review the background check and all relevant information to determine whether the record prohibits possession of a firearm. An exception to this process is if there is a match to an entry in the NICS indices, in which case the system will automatically issue a denial without human review. An important note here is on the difference between criminal records as maintained by police and criminal records as maintained by the courts. The criminal records databases maintained by police are based on fingerprints. If the individual was not fingerprinted or a fingerprint was not provided to law enforcement, no record of that crime will be maintained. However, the court system maintains criminal records based on name and date of birth. It does not require fingerprints. So, it's entirely possible to have a criminal conviction that is visible in the court system, but that isn't visible in the police system. This is particularly common with juvenile crimes because juveniles often do not get fingerprinted. Because State Patrol now has access to all information, it is very possible to be de denied with a safe check even if you've been approved on prior checks. It doesn't mean that the safe system makes you prohibited. What it means is that you have been prohibited, but the prohibiting information was not previously available to the agency doing the background check. Again, this is very common with juvenile offenses. I have a separate video about juvenile records causing denials. You can watch it by clicking the link above or in the description below. So how long should a safe check take? It can be automatic if there are no matches. If there is a match, on average, this check should only take a few business days. It may take longer if the State Patrol needs to request court records during the investi investigation and those records are very old or have to be requested from a different state. As of January 1st, the mandatory waiting period for all firearm purchases is 10 business days. Most checks will be completed within that time frame. If a check is not completed within that time frame, the dealer will not be able to transfer the firearm until the result of the background check is known. Finally, what happens after the check is completed? Well, if the transaction was proceeded, then you can pick up your firearm and be on your merry way. However, what happens if the check came back as indeterminate or as a denial? Well, if the status is indeterminate and further research is needed, you should wait at least a few business days for the de delay to resolve on its own. Not every delay signifies a problem or that a denial will be issued. If it is still not resolved after a few business days, you can always contact State Patrol to inquire as to what is being researched. This may help speed things along if State Patrol is waiting to receive records that you may have in your own possession. I'll put State Patrol's email in the description below and on the screen here. If you get denied, then there is the option to appeal the denial. While you may feel compelled to appeal, appealing is not always worth the effort. Appealing a denial is a nuanced topic that I have a separate video for. Click the link above or in the description below to watch that. 
It is my impression that safe system is a significant improvement over the old way of doing things. Being able to freely communicate with an actual human being that can be identified by name and who lives in Washington state and who works for a local state agency is leaps and bounds better than dealing with nameless bureaucrats who work for the FBI in West Virginia and who only speak in cryptic riddles. So that's the new State Patrol safe system in a nutshell. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.